Whether you support the president or not, it seems pretty clear his White House has been slowed down, if not immobilized, by recent events. Immigration reform and Obamacare repeal have been pushed off the agenda for now, replaced by constant flare-ups over James Comey, Russia, or simply the president's tweeting. But Trump is still the president, and his party still controls Congress for another 18 months at minimum. How can the White House get its mojo back and reclaim its freedom of action? This is a question that Charles Krauthammer has pondered. He's a writer, a columnist, of course, and a psychiatrist, and your favorite thinker, and he joins us now. So, Charles, what can the White House do? If you were to give them five pieces of advice, what would they be? Well, I think you take your playbook from Bill Clinton. He's caught up in the Lewinsky scandal, and in his case, he knows he's lying from the very beginning. Yes. Keeps on lying. But he was able to keep a straight face, try to keep his nose to the business he wanted to carry out. The famous statement, I did not have sexual relations, ends with, and now I'm going to go back to work. Yes. So he just pretended as if this thing was on the side, it was a distraction, and he went back to work. So what Trump needs to do is to spend less effort and time and emotional energy on this, starting with... You make an unimpeachable FBI director appointment. Right now, he needs to calm the craziness. I think he actually was helped by the appointment of this special counsel, even though in the long run it means the White House loses control of this. In the short run, people say, well, look, there's an investigation. Let's talk about health care. Let's talk about tax reform. Right. That'll take care of it. It's a way to deflect. If you make a good appointment for the FBI, by good I mean politically astute, which means somebody unimpeachable. Uh, I, on special report I said, you know what you need is an Elliot Ness. Right. You want so everybody respects, that gets you a lot of points and allows you to move on to other stuff. So that would be my number one. This I think will be important. Smart. Important. What's number two? Stop tweeting. Now that's never going to happen because I think he's hardwired, like neurologically attached to his tweeting machine. But it would help because when you tweet, you say what you really believe, and that's not always, that's not usually the smartest thing in politics. <laughs> no, you know, I mean, I tell the truth because it's easier to memorize. Yes. But I'm not the president, a politician. It's true. It's, a, you know, what a gaffe is in Washington when a politician accidentally tells the truth. And there's so much emotional truth pouring out of the president's tweeting machine that he gets in trouble. Yeah. So that, but Too much won't. reality. Number three, go on the foreign trip, and thereby, number four, change the narrative. Yeah. He's got a real opportunity. This is going to be a big deal what happens in Saudi Arabia. There are going to be 50 Sunni Arab countries there. There's going to be an announcement to the world of the total reversal of the Obama-Iran appeasement policy, where we chose a radical Shiite jihadist regime. We chose their favor over the Sunni Arabs who want to support us and over Israel, which will be stop number two. That'll be a big deal. It'll allow him to announce and really exemplify a huge change in foreign policy. The last thing is daily sessions with Dr. Krauthammer. <laughs> still licensed, board certified, and he's the only one who can afford my rates. So I think that what are you, what, what Can you give us a sense of the range of your rates? Um, they start, let's say they start in the stratosphere, and, they, and in his case, I would double that. Our viewers have been getting your services for the price only of a monthly cable subscription for I know. many years. I, I'm truly underpaid. <laughs> Last question, do you, do you think the president can follow at least the first four of these recommendations? Well, he's making his trip. I, I, he, he doesn't easily compartmentalize. He doesn't have that kind of almost psychopathic ability to make distinctions as Clinton did. Yes. I think he gets sort of into everything and it takes him over. So I don't think he can, but that's why he needs to see me probably for an hour a day for several years. Do you, <laughs> do you have visiting hours? Uh, by appointment only. <laughs> Dr. Charles Codhammer, fantastic. Thank you. Sure.